Hello, my name is Silvia Paleari and I'm the Senior Public Affairs Manager at the International Betting Integrity Association. First of all, I would like to thank Kindred for inviting me to such an important conference. I would like to start my intervention from the title actually, Collaborate to Innovate, because collaboration is at the key of the activities um, that we do at the International Betting Integrity Association, because without collaboration, we simply could not exist. And when I talk about uh, collaboration, I mean internal collaboration and external collaboration. Talking about internal collaboration, our members, who are the uh, um, regulated sports betting companies, um, they commit to uh, share information um, on suspicious betting patterns. And they can do that through our monitoring and alert platform. How does that work? Whenever they see something suspicious uh, on their uh, markets, our members can raise an alert uh, through our platform. Uh, in raising the alerts, they have to specify what they've seen and why they consider this suspicious. And then the alert is immediately shared with all the, our members. And they have the obligation to respond uh, to the alert and to reply whether they're seeing something suspicious, something similar or not. If they're seeing something suspicious, then they um, also have to uh, detail what they've seen and why they consider it uh, suspicious. We then all gather all the answers and we assess them. And if we have enough elements uh, and evidence to deem the alert suspicious, then we share it with um, sports governing bodies and regulators. Um, and this leads me to the external um, collaboration because the International Betting Integrity Association managed to put in place an integrity network with the external stakeholders and uh, whenever um, indeed we see something suspicious, we share this information with the relevant authorities. In particular, over the years, we managed to establish a very good collaboration with sports and sports governing bodies and we have um, sharing information agreements with uh, bodies like UEFA, FIFA, the uh, Tennis Integrity Unit and the IOC. To this end, I would like to um, show you a short video, video which um, explains how this collaboration has developed over time.
As you have seen from this uh, short video, all our members are committed via our code of conduct um, to share data with sports governing bodies and to assist them uh, in their investigation. And our members actually invest significant um, amounts in risk management and have detailed audit trails which uh, can be utilized to assist authorities with uh, their investigations. Our alerts and members' data uh, have led to numerous successful uh, prosecutions. For example, one of the uh, most recent one was a DART case, where one of um, our alerts was sent um, to the DART um, regulation authority, the DRA, uh, regarding suspicious um, activity on a, on a DART match. And the DRA then went on and investigated into the case, and uh, ultimately found out that two players were involved in, um, in fixing um, a match. And this is all public knowledge also because the two players involved publicly declared um, that they were actually fixing uh, the match. And then the, um, the RA uh, ultimately uh, suspended these players. So we can see that uh, thanks to a cooperation, um, it's... Um, uh, it's, it's possible to, uh, to fight against, ma against match fixing together. And uh, it's also possible thanks to timely uh, sharing of information. And that leads me to the uh, challenges when it comes to sharing of these informations. Um, because um, we had um, especially a challenging period when the uh, General Data Protection Regulation came into um, uh, into force. Uh, that meant that uh, we had to put in place a number of process and um, a number of, um, uh, of uh, procedures that uh, would ensure that the data transmitted would have been um, uh, dealt uh, and handled in a correct way. Now, it's important to under underline that GDPR doesn't prevent the sharing of data but they, um, they, they allow the sharing of this data if only a certain process is in place which allows the uh, correct um, processing of, uh, of those data. Uh, so us, as well as our members, had to put this um, uh, new process in place, had to comply with the new rules, and um, also, um, it's also important to under uh, underline that at the end of the day, our members are the responsible um, are responsible for ensuring that the data of their customers are handled in a lawful and in appropriate way. So that our members, they have to um, also have in place sharing of information agreements with, um, with relevant authorities anytime they need to share information about, uh, about those suspicious bets. And technological developments also uh, meant that we had um, to deal with increased numbers of information and, and data. And that leads me to the uh, title of this panel, which is how can new technology um, improve uh, integrity? And actually, technological developments has played an important role in improving the way we communicate and the way we handle alerts. Uh, for example, we improved a lot compared uh, to the past. If we look back uh, only to 10 years ago, most of our conversation was happening through the exchange of emails and phone calls. Uh, but now, thanks to our uh, platform, we can share information in a matter of a click. And um, before we were an, an, um, a European association, now we are an international association we, dealing with uh, international alerts and members all across the globe. So, um, uh, Thanks to the new um, alert and monitoring platform, we can reach them uh, simultaneously. So um, technology has definitely helped with a faster and, and better communication. And if I look at the future, I can see how um, artificial intelligence, for example, can play a, a role in detecting in a more efficient way uh, suspicious alerts. And uh, we can definitely get better, improve our systems, and uh, be better and faster in, in detection. But I would like to underline that uh, without human interaction, then 
um, all these technological developments will not uh, serve its purpose. And um, it's needed human interaction uh, when, um, when addressing um, in integrity in sports betting. And this is for three main reasons. The first is the willing to cooperate because we can see that we have put in place an integrity network and we can um, exchange information in a, in a faster and better way, thanks to the uh, our uh, thanks to our monitor alert alert platform. But without the willing to cooperate, that there would be no um, no system in place at all in first place. And this leads me to trust, because without trust, there would there wouldn't be uh, the possibility to collaborate and cooperate. And we can all we can have all the technological developments we want. We can have all the um, most innovative um, technologies that can serve us. But if there is no trust, then we cannot use this technology for the purposes of uh, ensuring integrity in sports betting and sports in general. And. The third point is that um, the human interaction that we need is when it comes to uh, drafting legislation, because we need legislation in place that allow a viable gambling market to operate. And uh, when drafting law, so people ultimately are, draft, are the uh, decision makers and, and they are those drafting the law, if the uh, law is not drafted in a way that allows the market to, uh, to strive, then there is the risk that the market will be restricted, for example, with the restricting um, uh, or limiting certain types of bets or uh, having a disproportionate tax burden, then that, that all will push consumers to, um, to uh, look for better products in the unregulated markets. And there are unregulated markets, uh, in those markets there is not at all um, an oversight on, on integrity, there is no monitoring on the uh, betting patterns, so there, there is no incentive to, um, to, to fight uh, match fixing in a regulated market. So um, if the legislation is not, um, is not meeting the purposes of, uh, of ensuring a valuable market, then the, uh, the fight against match fixing in first place is lost. So to conclude, technology has played and will continue to play a key role when it comes to integrity in sports betting, but trust and the human side will continue to remain crucial. Thanks a lot for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them.